question based on AQA A-level chemistry. It is from paper three. It's one of the required practical questions, and this one is based on RPA7. As always, I'm going to recommend you pause, have a go at each section where you can, and then review your answers so you can see what you can do and what you might need to do some work on. So here is part A. Part B. Here's part C. Part D. And part E. So if you've had a go, now let's go back to the beginning and start taking a look. So it is related to rates of reaction. We have iodine and propanome reacting together. It's an acid catalyzed reaction and we've got the equation provided. Student completing a series of experiments, we're transferring 25 centimeter cubed of 1.0 molar propanone solution into a conical flask. We're adding 10 cm cubed of 1 molar HCl. We're then adding 25 centimeter cubed of 5 by 10 to the minus 3 molar I2, starting a timer. Each minute, we remove a 1 cm cubed sample. Add each sample to a separate beaker, which has an excess of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Titrate the contents on each beaker of each beaker with a standard solution of sodium thiosulfate. Record the volume of sodium thiosulfate used. There's a lot of information to take on board here, and there's a huge amount that you're going to need to pick out that is important. So why were the 1 cm cubed portions of the reaction mixture added to an excess of NaHCO3? Well, one of the things you're looking at here is that this is an acid catalyzed reaction. And we also know, hopefully, that sodium hydrogen carbonate will act as a base. We're adding it because that will then neutralize the acid catalyst. And if the acid catalyst is neutralized, that means we are stopping the reaction. So it's not carrying on during the titration. We're essentially finding out that snapshot, that moment in time where the concentrations are, where they are. Moving on to part B. Um, I've put the equation back up there again. Suggest why the order of this reaction with respect to propanone can be ignored in this experiment. Well, actually, we need a little bit more information as well. So I'm going to bring that forward. And they are the concentrations that we were just provided with. Propanone is one mole per decimeter cubed. Iodine is five by 10 to the minus three moles per decimeter cubed. Now, actually, there's a big difference there. We have got a much greater concentration of propanone. It is significantly higher than the concentration of iodine, actually to the order of around 200 times greater. And if that's the case, any small changes to propanone are going to have a negligible impact. So there'd be negligible change if we change the concentration of it. We can assume that it's constant. And if we're assuming it's constant, it's not going to have an impact on the rate of reaction. Moving on to part C, this is a graph plotting activity. You may have decided not to do this, but hopefully you got some graph paper and gave it a go. It's always good to practice it. Need to choose a suitable scale. Now it lends itself quite well here to six minutes going across. And I'm going to put the points in that I've plotted. And hopefully what you're spotting here is that there is an anomaly. Always look out for, is it a straight line? Is it a curve? But are there any anomalies which I'm going to disregard? And if I take that one out, I can see a straight line. Now for part D, I'm bringing that graph across. We're being asked here to explain how this graph shows the reaction is zero order with respect to iodine in the reaction between propanone and iodine. Now, if you think about rates of reaction when you first learnt about them at GCSE, you'll know that the rate is fastest at the beginning and eventually it plateaus. It comes to a horizontal line and that's because we've run out of reagents. But from that fastest rate, we normally get a curve. The fact is here, we're not getting a curve. The graph is a straight line, even as... The concentration of iodine is going down. The iodine is being used up. If the iodine is being used up and the rate isn't slowing down, the concentration of iodine cannot have any impact on rate. So for that reason, it is zero order. Let's move on to part E. We've got the Arrhenius equation here that has been provided up at the top, always will be. Figure shows a graph of log K against 1 over T. 
We're being given R 8.31, which you'll recognize from the ideal gas equation as well. Use the figure above to calculate a value for the activation energy. So I have got here my uh, structure lines so I can work out the gradient. I've got Y and I've got X. And I am going to have to read this graph very, very carefully. So Y, I can see here I'm going from negative 14.1 to negative 2.8. And on X, I'm going from 0.00180 to 0.00128. Once I've got those in, I can put them into my gradient uh, calculation, changing Y over changing X. You may have actually done the working out to get these numbers. And your numbers might be slightly different, but as long as you work with them and they're close to this and readable from the graph, it will be absolutely fine. But that takes us to a gradient um, negative 21731. Now, we know that gradient is negative EA over R. We want activation energy. So we're going to take that gradient and multiply it by R. And that takes us to a value of 180583 joules per mole. But we want kilojoules per mole. So that takes us to 181 kilojoules per mole. And that takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.